Amen. God is good, amen? Amen. amen. Appreciate the Lord. It's good to be in the house of God with y'all. See, God is so good to us. Amen. Look for what he's going to do. Max looks all sharp. Looking good. I'll take a picture next to him. It makes me, he'll make me look good. All right. Appreciate God. God's good, amen? Amen. It's good to have you all in the house of the Lord this evening. And like once again, I'd like to reiterate what uh, Reverend Walker was saying. Pray for brothers that are in the field. They actually had a little bit of a, somewhat kind of a close call today. Uh, I guess an osprey went down and uh, attached to, I guess, Camp Pendleton, but had similar uh, youth markings as Clayton's. And so made a bunch of phone calls, making sure all the guys are okay, got a hold of Clayton, everybody's all right, everybody's okay. But, but uh, we want to be we want to be in church, we want to be ready. Amen? Yes. Yes. I don't know when our day is going to come. I, I heard last I checked, I think everybody in that Osprey perished. And so uh, we need to keep inviting. Amen? Yes. Keep reaching out. And I begin to think, man, if, if, uh, if some of the brothers that we've that have been in church and maybe prayed for salvation, if they did, if they were in that in that in that uh, aircraft, uh, thank God they were in church. Amen. And so we want to be ready. We want to be ready. And if we want to enjoy God. God's good to us. Amen. Amen. He's a God of love. He cares about us. We can enjoy ourselves. But we also have to remember we are getting ready for eternity. We are getting ready for eternity, and we need to take. This walk that God has for us very seriously. So I'd like to direct your attention uh, this evening to uh, Revelation, to the book of Revelation, the third chapter. And I want to read one verse of scripture, and then we'll have Reverend Walker uh, pray. Once again, be praying for those that are not with us this evening. Pray for Jerry. He's uh, recovering from being sick, and uh, he wants he wanted to be here. So pray for him and uh, various different ones. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and have sat down with my Father in his throne. And with the Lord, with the help of the Lord, and we need the Holy Spirit's help, we'd like to minister and title the message this evening, Overcome. Reverend Walker, please pray. Thank you, Lord Father, for the reading of your word. I ask now that you bless the preaching of your word, that you would unction the man of God afresh, that you would lead God, direct him, that you would put your words in his mouth and send your word forth and soften each heart here tonight to receive your word on good ground and allow it to bring forth fruit as it should and prosper in each soul here tonight. And loving Father God, we'll give you the praise, we'll give you all the glory, we'll give you all the honor, for it's in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ? I pray these things. Amen. Amen. Overcomer. Say it with me. Overcomer. Overcomer. How many want to be an overcomer for God tonight? Amen. 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 That's our desire. That's my desire. And with God's help, we are overcomers. Amen. There's a lot of things that God's helped us to overcome in our lives. Here in Revelation, uh, I, I read to you out of chapter 3, but I want to start in chapter 2. We see in these two chapters, Jesus is speaking to seven churches that were located in Asia Minor during this time in, in church history. John, the, ba or John excuse me, the Apostle John was banished to the island of Patmos. And while he was there, he was in the spirit of the Lord's day. He was having church all by himself. You know, he can enjoy God's presence wherever you are. Amen? Amen? So he was enjoying the presence of the Lord. He's in the spirit of the Lord's day. And God gave this revelation to him. And here, these letters came forth to these seven churches that were, late, that were literally located in Asia Minor at the time. And so we do well to take heed to them because... The message that the, the words that are spoken in these, these two chapters are for the entire New Testament church. They're Amen. for us, for all of us. But I would like to look at a portion of each one of these letters, and that's the last portion of each one of them. So the very first church that he writes to is Ephesus. But every church, every in every letter that Jesus writes here, he ends with the term overcometh. Overcomer, overcometh, this concept. And in chapter 2, as he writes to Ephesus, the church in Ephesus, he ends it in verse 7 by saying, To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. I'm looking forward to partaking of that tree. Amen. I like fruit. Yeah. I really do. Mm -hmm. But I've had my share of good fruit and bad fruit. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you pick a fruit, you hope that it's going to taste good. And when it's really good, you're like, wow, this is really good. My wife got some strawberries not too long ago. They were amazing for those parfait she made. And they were really good. But can you imagine when you go up to pick this fruit off of this tree, that when you get ready to eat it and bite into it, there'll be no apprehensions because you know it's going to be awesome. Yes. 
You know it's going to be perfect. You know it's going to be flawless. It's going to, you're going to bite into that thing and it's going to satisfy. It's there for the healing of the nations. It's going to help to heal. And what, what a moment that will be. So Jesus says to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Paradise restored. Paradise restored. The paradise of God there with the Father, there with the Son, and the Holy Spirit presence and all the heavenly hosts enjoying God's presence. And the next letter he writes is Samaritan. And he, in verse 11, as he ends this discourse, he says this. He says, he that overcometh, in verse 11, I'm just reading the, the second half of the verse, he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. And so Reverend Walker was hard on making the rapture. Well, if you don't make the rapture, you're going to die. But there's another death that comes afterwards. There's a first death and a second death. First death, we die, and those of us that are saved, we're going to be with the Lord afterwards. Amen? Amen. The second death are people that aren't right with God. And in that one, they get thrown in the lake of fire. That's, that's not, we don't want to make that one. We want to... We want to be right with God now. Amen? Amen? And so that's, so if we'll overcome, he says we won't be hurt of the second death. Moving on further into this third, into this second chapter, in verse 17, as he begins to write to Pergamos, he says this. He says, To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in, a, and in the stone a new name, written which no man knoweth, save he that receiveth it. I wonder what my name is. I wonder what God's going to call me. You ain't know me as Brother Rossi, but whatever it is, it's going to be cool. It's going to be a perfect name. Maybe you don't like your name. Live for Jesus. God's got a new one for you. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure Reverend Ernie's mind's going right now. He's got that creativity. And so he's probably thinking something funny. But God's good, amen? Appreciate the Lord. It won't be Rumpelstiltskin, by the grace of God. All right. Super Califragile, Sex Meal of something like that. But it'll be a cool name. A name that's made just for you. Perfect name. You won't be, a, you won't be for those of us that are old enough, you won't be a boy named Sue. <laughs> All right, God's good. All right, God's good. Appreciate the Lord. Amen. All right, I'm so glad my name's not Dick Butkus. <coughs> say right there. I thank God for that. God's good. Appreciate the Lord. Meanest football player ever. Wonder why. All right, move along. All right. And so we talk about him that overcometh, and then it moves on a little bit further into this chapter, verse 25, as he begins to continue to write here to Thyteria. He says, "And he that overcometh and keepeth my works." Unto the, unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. We're going to rule and reign with God. With those of us that overcome, we're going to rule and reign with God. We're going to, what, what, that's, that's going to be amazing. We're going to rule and reign with God. So you ever wonder why you go through a lot down here? Because the Bible says we're going to judge angels. And if we're going to judge angels, and if we're going to rule the nations with the Lord Jesus Christ, then we have to live, we have to, we have to have some training, so to speak, so that people will respect Respect us when we're put in that position. Amen? Amen. And so God's kids go through a crucible, go through a training exercise, go through a, a form of a preparation for that time and for that place. We're not, just, we're not just going through things haphazardly, but there's a purpose for it. Then we move into chapter 3 as he continues to talk about the church of Sardis. He says this about overcoming in verse, verse 5, chapter 3 of Revelation. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in a white raiment. I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. What? Jesus is going to sit there and proclaim your name. He's going to proclaim your name. He's going to stand up for you. He's going to give you a perfect garment that, that isn't that spotless and that's flawless, that, that robe of righteousness, so to speak. And, and so they're moving into this. We see Philadelphia in a verse, a verse 12 of chapter 3 says, And he that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more, he shall go no more out. I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So we're going to have a home. We're going to have an identity, a place that we belong. A place that we belong. As we were sharing just the other day in Bible study, we're just passing through this world. And every once in a while, God likes to disrupt our lives a little bit so we don't get too comfortable down here. Because we're not meant to stay here. We're getting ready for the city to come. Amen? God's here. Amen. And so you might always feel like you're trying to find your niche, having a hard time finding it. Well, there's some, in, in a way, that's a good thing because you're not, the world doesn't have you. Some people love the world too much, they have no desire to go to heaven. You say, well, I, I'm not ready to go to heaven. I, I've got some things I need to do. But brothers and sisters, when you know what glory has in store, there's nothing down here that's worthy, that's worth anything compared to what God has in store for us. Right. Talk about him that overcometh. To him that overcometh. And then the last book, in the last church here, he speaks to us, and I really like this, Laodicea. 
He says, to him that overcometh. Say, overcometh with me. Overcometh. Amen. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. I love that. Because I've made the statement that when I get up to heaven, if the Lord lets me, I'm going to run across that sea of glass, crawl, crawl along those streets of gold, run right, up into the, right, right, run right up into the throne room, and give Jesus a big old hug. And here he says that I'm going to have a chance to do that if I overcome. Amen? Amen. Yeah. I'm going to sit with him in his throne. I don't know what it's going to be like. I don't know what that throne, that throne exactly looks like, but I know it's glorious. Lord God, give us a little bit of insight in Ezekiel in various different places, but what a glorious throne it is. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. And I love what he says here. Even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Jesus was the first overcomer. And when Christ abides in our hearts by faith, he gives us a spirit and a power to overcome as well. We become like our Lord. We become greater as he that's in us than he that's in the world. We also can overcome. You don't have to be sorry. You don't have to be a loser. You don't have to be defeated. With God's help, you can be victorious. Amen? Amen. But listen to what he says. To him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne? Do you picture sitting in the throne of heaven with Jesus? Talk about royalty, and we are royalty, the Lord God tells us that. But he goes on to say, even as I also overcame, this is Jesus speaking. He said, we're going to overcome like Jesus overcame. Well, how did Jesus overcome? Is the question I want to ask. And that's the, the heart of what I really want to dig into this evening. As I introduce this message to you about over the overcomer. How did Jesus overcome? I'm going to take you to Revelation chapter 12 now. We're in Revelation chapter 3, but we're going to jump to chapter 12. And we're going to look at verse 11. And then we're going to come back in just a moment. Here we see these saints here found in glory. It says in verse 11, And they overcame him. They overcame the devil, the wicked one. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the dead. Notice. First off, they didn't care about their lives. They just wanted to make it to heaven. Secondarily, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus is able to wash away every trace of sin in our lives. Yes, sir. It's able to forgive. It's able to restore. It's able to set us and make us every whit whole. So they overcame by the blood of Jesus Christ. They overcame by the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. The word of their testimony, this word testimony refers several times to the Old Testament testimony, the old the law or the covenant, the old covenant that was inside of the Ark of the Covenant. We have a testimony as well. It's the new covenant, so to speak. And we overcome by the word of God, which I'm reading out of you, reading to you, reading out of today. Amen? We overcome by the word of God. We overcome by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the word of God. And by not loving our lives until the end. By we are of this persuasion, Lord, wash me in your blood. God, you can have my life. I give my life to you. And I'm going to follow the word of God. And by following the word of God, we'll be victorious. We dealt with some of this just yesterday as we looked at Jesus as he was tempted of the devil. And how he, he pronounced the word of God in, in Satan's face. And by doing so, rendered the attacks of, of Satan ineffective And won victoriously. But we also overcome by the Word of God. And I want to look at just a little bit, the kernel of this, uh, to really give you a little bit of a background as we go back now to where we were just at a second ago, when I read to you our key text that, our key text that we use at the beginning of the service, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Let's look at how Jesus overcame. Let's look at how Jesus overcame. Follow me, if you will, uh, to Hebrews. To Hebrews, if you're following along in the Word of God, let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. Reverend Walker just preached from this the other night, and it's very, it's very timely. I was already thinking about this message, and when Reverend Walker preached, blessing and be good to be good to us. But let's look at Hebrews chapter 12, and let's see uh, what the Word of God has for us here in this second verse. <clears throat> Excuse me, where he says in chapter 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus. So he's telling us how to overcome. Looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So how are we to overcome? By looking unto Jesus. Amen. When you go through something in life, what do you do? You look to Jesus. Amen. When you're up against the wall and you don't know which way to go, you look to Jesus. 
You get your eyes off yourself, you get your eyes on God. There's four ways. There's four ways that a man or a woman can be victorious in this life. One of them is by remembering what Jesus did on the cross for you. Remembering what Jesus did on the cross for you. Remembering the punishment as we talked about on Sunday night. And the, and the great beating that he took just to demonstrate his love for you. And God did it while we were yet sinners. If it was possible for him to love us more, how much more uh, is he now for us now that we're seeking after him? Amen? Amen? Jesus died for us when we were alienated from him. We didn't even care about God. But now that we're seeking God, we're pushing towards the Lord. How much more, if anything, would God do all that he possibly could to save us? Thank God for the cross of Calvary. One of the ways that we gain victory and overcome in this life is when we find ourselves being tempted or up against a difficult time in our hearts. We remember what Jesus did for us. For God so loved the world he gave us. What's the second thing we do? Second thing we do is we realize, wait a minute, I've accepted Jesus into my life. How many accepted Christ in your heart? Yes, Amen. If you have, Jesus has wrapped you in a robe of righteousness. Hallelujah. If God says you're righteous, then you're righteous. Now live like it. Amen. We don't, we're not trying to earn our way in. We are wrapped in his righteousness when we accept what Christ did on the cross. God gives us a goodly garment. He gives us his righteousness and he applies it to our heart and our life. He wraps us in righteousness. When the Father looks down, he sees the righteousness of his Son in us. And now since we've already been accepted in the Beloved, we've accepted Christ in our lives. Now we just get up in newness of life and walk as God has already placed us in the family of God. But the righteousness of God is upon us. The third one of the third ways that we overcome the devil and we overcome the difficulties in this life is what? Remembering our adoption papers. Remembering our adoption papers. What do you mean by that? The Bible says, as many as received him, received Christ, to them gave you power to become the sons of God. When you accepted Christ in your heart and life, that day God adopted you into his family. So not only did he love you and die for you on the cross of Calvary, not only did he wrap you in his robe of righteousness, that royal robe, not only uh, so you're spiritually righteous before the Lord, not only that, but he adopted you into the family, and we know that because the Spirit of God bears, this, bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. And finally, the last thing that we do to overcome when you feel like difficulties coming in upon you, what's, what do we do? We focus on our heavenly home and where we're going. And when you realize that, you'll say within your heart of hearts, you can have this whole world, just give me Jesus. I'm looking forward to seeing the Lord face to face. I'm looking forward, like I said, to walking across the streets of gold, sliding across a sea of glass. Talk about riding a wave. I don't know exactly how that's going to look, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Climbing up those foundations, those 12 foundations, and the, stepping up the Sardis and Topaz and, and, the, and the barrel and all the different onyx and all the various different stones and, and approaching unto God. What a day that'll be. So looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, how did Jesus endure the cross? He looked for the joy at the end of it. He focused on being with his heavenly Father. He focused on you, all of us, being saved. He focused on you being born again, you, being, you getting victory over sin. Jesus looked at what he was going to accomplish on the other side of the cross, and that gave him the strength to endure it. And when we focus on what Christ has done for us, and we look at the hope that's set before us, we can stand up and put ourselves like men, and we can go forward and go, you know what? I'm looking forward to the other side of this. Because God doesn't let his kids go through anything. It doesn't benefit them. Because all things work together for the good to them that love God and call called according to his purpose. It's been said before that the making of a, the making or the salvation of a soul is a miracle of a moment. But the making of a saint is a process of a lifetime. And God is molding us into his image. Amen? Amen. And so looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross despising the shame. He didn't want to deal with the shame, but he despised it, but he endured it. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, and now he's sitting at the right hand of the throne of God, and he told us that if we'll overcome, we're also going to sit with him in that same throne. He's sitting with the Father, and we're going to get a chance to sit with him. And so I want to take you to the last portion of the scripture that God has for us this evening as we look at how Jesus overcame by the word of his testimony. Psalm 16. Psalm 16. I love what the Lord says here. We see here Gethsemane. We see our Lord as he's, in the, as, as he's in the garden of Gethsemane. And God begins to speak through this psalm to us. And this is what it says. And I'm not going to get into all of it. For the sake of time, I'm just going to pick up in verse 8. For Jesus says this. This is written about the Lord. 
He said, I have set the Lord always before me. Notice the terminology. I have set the Lord always before me. So who is Jesus looking unto? The Father. Amen? And who are we to look unto? Jesus. So we watch and see what Jesus did, and we do what Jesus did. Jesus looked unto the Father, and we look unto Jesus. Amen? We follow his example. He showed us how to overcome. We're talking about overcomers. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Do, do you not know that Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you? But go with you all the way, even to the end of the world. No matter where, when you were in the car today, on your way here, God was there with you by the Holy Spirit. He was present, looking over you, taking care of you, protecting you, and got you here safely. We want to walk in the goodness and the grace of God. We want to trust in the love of Jesus Christ. We want to walk a life that's consistent with godliness and trust in our Heavenly Father to look out for us through the Holy Spirit's presence. He is the comforter. He says, because he is at my right hand at the end of verse 8 here, he said, I shall not be moved. Why? Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. And that's powerful. Because here Jesus is Jesus, Jesus speaking as he, he's talking about the cross. As he's being beaten. As he's being whipped. Or he's aware of the punishment that he's going to go through. He says my flesh also shall rest in hope. You know and maybe as you get older things not start working quite right. But you know one of these days your flesh shall rest in hope. Amen. God's going to give us a glorified body. But Jesus looked beyond. He looked at the promise the promise, for he says the promise here in verse 10. See, this Old Testament was written here that I'm reading and reading to you. This was written before Jesus went to the cross. Amen. And so no doubt these words were on our Lord's mind as he, as he approached Gol Gol Golgotha, as he approached Calvary. He said, for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Because Jesus went and spent three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, and on the third day he rose again. Amen. But he went down. He took the punishment. He even ascended into the deep. He said, Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. In other words, I'm not going to stay down there. Maybe while he was descending down into that area, into those nether regions, he recited this psalm to him. Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. We know he came out. He rose again on the third day. Amen? And then he says, Thou wilt show me the paths of life. That will show me the path of life. When we endure the cross, when we pick up our cross and follow Jesus. Now, Jesus hasn't called us to carry his cross. He's called us to carry our own. He's called us to carry our own. And each, per each person's cross here is different. My cross is different than yours. Yours is different than mine. But the cross and the burden that God has for you, he says, my, bur my, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. God has a weight for you to carry, but it's one you're designed to carry. If you're not happy today, it's probably because you're carrying a load that you weren't designed to carry. Sometimes men in their pride say, well, I can handle this. I can carry this weight. And God said, they're going, what are you doing? That's not a weight you're designed to carry. God didn't design us to carry alcoholism. Amen. God didn't design us to carry pornography. That's right. no. I can handle it. God didn't design us That's right. to carry, you fill in the blank. Any other thing it may be, God designed us to carry the light that he has for us, the goodness of God, the grace of God, Amen. the righteousness of God. Amen? Amen. And so sometimes the devil will say, well, you can handle it. Just discipline yourself. Yeah, get it out of your life. And Amen. find a cross. Find a cross that's worth carrying. Amen? Amen? God has a burden for you to bear that will give you, will give you purpose and, and give you a reason to get up in the morning. And you'll carry it. Like one man asked me the other day, he said, he said, uh, Robert, he said, Pastor, is it difficult for you uh, to be a pastor? I said, yes, it is. I, I, will, I will acknowledge that there are difficulties in it. I said, but it's not something that I fret over because it's something I'm designed to carry. Yes. Because God makes us fit for the thing he has for us to do. Amen. Amen. Amen? It's a burden that I'm designed to carry. Is it a burden? At times it is. But a man needs a purpose in the morning. We need a reason to get up. Amen? Amen. I don't want easy street. I really don't. Because there's no purpose in that. You know, you don't have any respect for anyone who has an easy Am I right? I know you don't, because you wouldn't have joined the Marine Corps. <laughs> you would have joined the Air Force. All right, well, let's leave it alone. All right, all right, God's good. Let's leave it alone. I don't have any Air Force. All right, you wanted to do something that was difficult. 
Something that was a challenge. You didn't want easy street. You wanted to be respected. You wanted a challenge. Well, I got something for you that God's designed you for, and that's to be the man that God's called you to be. Amen. Amen. God's called you to go and reach out to the lost. God's called you to pray for your fellow sailors and marines. God's called you to look to Jesus, to, to give your heart to God. God's called you for this purpose, to live for the Lord, to be a man of manner and honor and integrity, to be, and I like to say it a lot, the real Simplify, the one that's always faithful, his name is Jesus. And he's the one that you can lean on and depend on because he is somebody that does really perform, if you will, the Marine Corps values. He has courage and candor. Amen? Amen. I don't know if any... Let's just leave it right there. I'm not trying to be hard on the Marine Corps. I just thank God for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Appreciate the Lord. When we give our lives to Jesus, that same, that same God abides in our hearts. And we begin, we begin to become the man that God's created us to be. He says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. That's what I'm talking about. When we, get, when we carry the burden that God has designed for us, we don't carry it to be saved. We're saved by His grace. Amen? But then God gives us something to do. He gives us a purpose. He gives us a reason. One of the words, you know, I'll be, I'll be the first one, to be, I'll be straight up honest with you. When COVID hit it, I hated it. Like, I, I hate just sitting around. I needed something to do. Now, maybe you liked it, but I didn't. It got boring after a while. I need, so I need a reason to just sit there and pick lint on my belly button. That was terrible. This is not living. Sit around the fridge, get fat, want to do something. It was cool for a little bit, like a little vacation. But man, after the first month, I'm like, let's do something. Let's get out of here. And so, God's good, amen? amen? Amen. God's called us to carry something. And he has the perfect load for us. Thou wilt show me the paths of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. In thy presence is fullness of joy. Remember what Jesus said? For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And so we look to Jesus, now looking unto Jesus, and what we're looking forward to, the joy. And I've got news for you. Jesus said, I came to give you life, and that much more abundantly. I've experienced way more joy than I ever did before I knew him. I've experienced way more gratification yeah. since I've known the Lord. Now, I've left too since I've known God. I can honestly say, I think I've experienced the full gamut of emotions way more than I ever did before. But looking back at the old man, it was like I was a dead man walking. But once I got saved, it was like yes. God ripped off. A, a, he, I got tender in a sense, and not weak, but just I became aware. I became alive. I became awake. I felt like the old guy was just a statue. The new guy's living flesh. And, yes. and so God did a work in my life. And there's a weapon harder than I did before, but I've had way more joy than I ever had before. Way more glory, way more uh, satisfaction, way more peace. There's just something about knowing God. And this is what he says, at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And so when difficulty comes our way, we do what our Lord did. What do we do? Looking unto Jesus as he looked unto the Father. We look beyond the difficulty on the other side when there's joy cometh in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And then we realize that in his presence, in his presence is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. What God has for you is so Amen. greater than everything the world has. Amen. It gives you a soft pillow. You wake up enjoying life and you say, wow, God is so good. He's so good. I just, like, you're ready to close. Brother Ernie's been working on the home, getting things squared away. There was no way I would ever met him if it wasn't for Jesus. Hallelujah. There's no way I'd ever met Brother Torres if it wasn't for Jesus. I wouldn't have met the Majewskis. I wouldn't have met Gene. I wouldn't have met Max, Aaron. Maybe Reverend Walker because we were in the military to get him to get across paths. My wife possibly as well. But what are you trying to say, Brother Rossi? My life is fuller because of Jesus. Hallelujah. I've got people in my life that I would have never met before. And, and, and uh, people in my life that whose paths we would have never crossed. From different walks of life, from different backgrounds, different foods, different all, all kinds of different things. God's so good to us. And the Bible says God takes the solitary, that's the lonely, and he sets them in families. And God has a place for you today in his, in, his, in his kingdom. And you can overcome as well if you follow God's lead. You look and see what Jesus did. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We're preaching about overcomer. How many of you an overcomer today? Amen. Amen. As you bow your heads and you close your eyes, reverence to God and Sister Ross, if you get to play. Thou would show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. What is it you need today? God is here in this place to meet that need. 